<laughs> Mask. The face shield. I hear that uh, there's guys complaining that uh, they won't be able to wear a hat if they wear a face shield. So I'm proving them <laughs> that they can wear a hat. That's excellent. <laughs> we, we want to see you run first and then we'll know. Yeah, the aer kind of aerodynamics. That's all about practice. <laughs> Uh, can, you, can you guys manage um, the the uh, participants? I'm gonna. I'm already. Uh, Welcome, team. Hope everybody's well. You can see this lovely glare on my face. You can see the hat on my head. Little rumors about. You can't wear a hat because you have a face shield. You can do it. I promise. I have the glare so you can see that I am actually wearing it. My hat is sitting nicely on the back of my head and over my forehead. So I am ready. Let's bring it. Uh, we have David. We got Thaddeus. All the guys that will be joining us here shortly will be able to let in. So you do have the chat screen. If you do have questions as we go through this, feel free to um, ask questions. The participants in tonight's call looks like it's ranging all the way from D1 to D5, so I'm excited to have you on. Um, thank you very much for coming aboard. We're going to be pausing for one second. My oven is going off. I got to get the lasagna out, so bear with me for one second. David, David, or Thaddeus, if you want to talk for a few minutes, feel free. I don't think too many people can pull off that exit right there. Only him. I don't. I don't think so either. Well, we still have people coming in right now. Glad to see everybody. Yeah. Okay, let's on this stage. Let's rock and roll. All right, guys, I'm going to share a screen with you. Somebody go ahead and, uh, David, if you can run through, you see some other gunslingers, just let them in, okay? Uh, Got let's you. see here. Share a screen. Let's do this here as we go. David, is that you? Mute yourself. Oh, who's music is that? Who's talking out of the thing? That's not me. Uh, let's see. Let me try to mute everybody. Uh, okay, so today we're going to discuss 3 and 1 been going over here for a little while these past few weeks, so hopefully three and one is common to you, but we're just going to talk plays. Uh, let's see here, agenda. Hey, guys. We have 15 scrimmages as of now for Thursday the 20th, Friday the 21st. I don't haven't seen anything for the 22nd, but that's going to be the weekend for our rural schools or smaller schools outside of Bear County to be able to have a scrimmage. You're gonna to have to be flexible. You're gonna to have to be willing to go places to work these scrimmages. You're just gonna to have to jump in. I know there's gonna be volunteers to go some of the large, the longer schools, Rock Springs, Carrizo, we're just gonna to have to go satisfy these requirements. We're gonna jump right in feet first and rock and roll. So be patient. The board knows you wanna get on. You're just gonna to have to step up. I'll go through the YG website again here. File reports, we're gonna, you're going to see in Arbiter a new a uh, uh, new section for file reports and file codes game management. So as we get through this, I'll show you, I didn't actually paint a slide for the file reports, but in Arbiter, I'll show you what that looks like. Huddle plays, you'll see some tack on, you'll see spot file, you'll see basic spot, basic spot and previous spot. 
we still do have our fan motto. And I know we haven't spoken about it at, since our last meeting, but fast is okay, but accuracy is all that matters. That's our fan. Okay, guys, so. David, Thaddeus, you guys got any comments, anything else before we jump into this? Nope, let's get started. Let's get I don't, started. David might have some. <laughs> I, I don't have anything right now. Okay. Share your screen. Uh, share your screen. Trying, trying to show you this. Still not showing the right. Is this showing Arbiter? Is it still showing the PowerPoint? We're in Arbiter right now. You are in, you see an Arbiter? Yes, sir. Okay. Under the schedule, you'll see your calendar. You've got your master schedule. There's going to be a new, there, if you don't, if you haven't paid attention or you're not seeing it yet, this is the first time there is a penalty report. Officials, referee, teammates, colleagues, this is a group effort. You have fouls in the first half. It's going to be important that you import these new fouls with their foul codes respective to the foul that happened on the field and the category into the penalty report. You're going to do this for the first half during halftime and then after the game, the second half. The actual penalty report will be sitting within Arbiter for the coaches to be able to go get access to. So you may not necessarily have to email them like some of us did last year. This is very important for your crew grade, your ranking, how you're going to benefit throughout the year is how your paperwork looks. So as this starts to roll, you guys are going to have to start paying attention to write your files down and get them right within the good category to where they belong. All right. Did that already. Now let's move on to what everybody came for. Okay, we're seeing huddle. Yes. Yes, we are. I see huddle. Okay. Get to think of the play. I mean. Let me stop this. Let's kind of talk about a three and one for a second. Three and one is a principle that can be confusing. It's a principle that we should know for enforcement purposes. <clears throat> We've gone over many times. So I don't necessarily think we have to keep going over and over, but for our principles today. The first play we're going to see is an enforcement spot, is a foul that's going to be happening on the kicking team, and how and where do we enforce that from? We'll also see spot fouls. We're going to see basic spot fouls and previous spot fouls. So as we start to go through this, We got three, four screens. I'm trying to manage here, guys, real quick. So just bear with me. As we start to go through this, we're going to talk capped, communication, appearance, pre, post, and dead. So we've got the Davids, we've got Thaddeus. Any other gunslingers that joined here that I need to be aware of at the moment? I know some of them are coming in late. Okay. All right. I shared the plays in huddle, guys, so that you should have these plays already. So if it is choppy, you can go back and reference what we're doing through the YouTube channel and the plays that I had shared with you, okay? I 
with OC the foul on the kicking team, going low. It's about the 22. Not very often you're going to see this kind of foul. He's coming from the middle of the field, but from a wide angle perspective. You can't necessarily see, but it might be a deep wing that's going to have this guy coming down the field until he gets to the point of contact. My scrimmage guys are going to be moving up. Well, they're going to be sitting still on the pylon. They're not in a rush to be moving forward. Still not moving. Eyes are downfield. My scrimmage guys starting to see the blocks develop. Now moving, but at the same time, Deep wings, maybe the referee might have a view of this as well. Referee's got angles going. He's got an angle from the middle of the field. End of the run is, where's the end of the run? At about the 25. That's where his momentum is stopped. So at that point in time, you'll be able to have your low block, block below the waist. So Eric, we do have a question in the chat about a potential illegal wedge formation. Right at the start of the kick, you can see two to three guys start getting within two yards, shoulder to shoulder right there. Pretty close. They're on different planes at that point. Yeah, I don't think they're on the same yard line. They start to separate. And it doesn't look intentional at all. Yeah, and they're on a different plane. That's key, is what plane they're on. Now, does you have any comments from the deep wing perspective? Or David, you got any comments? Or the other David from the line of scrimmage perspective? Anybody else got a comment on this? I mean, from the mm -hmm. deep wing, just remember you have. Oh, go ahead, Thaddeus. I, mean, I was going to say, you know, you might better help out on that because you're right. You still got those blockers coming down, and I mean, to me, you should kind of see it because I mean, <laughs> the guy goes straight low now. What normally happens is guys aren't looking for a kicking team to block below the waist. So, you know, hopefully you get that in some pregame where coach say, hey, you got to watch him doing this, blah, 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 because otherwise you're just not looking for that. Go ahead, David. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Like, I, I, hopefully I would see this happen because it's right at the point of attack where the forces are converging. And, but then it would probably surprise me, and I would wonder if I really saw that because it's not something you see. Can you run it back? I mean, at this point in time, the line of scrimmage guys are just getting started when that guy hits about the 
15. And he really, there's no, it's important to be there, but your eyes have to be able to focus on that as well. So, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to see this. Anything One thing else? I'll add is you're not looking for the kicking team to go low, but you are looking for low blocks. And you want to make sure when you see it, you get it on the right guy because it's happened before and I can pull film from on the D1 side that they have saw it, they talked about it, and they still enforce it wrong. So make sure, you know, you see it, you might be surprised, like, was that really on the hitting team? You might talk yourself into saying, no, it was the receiving team that went low. Let's, you know, we're backing them up. So you make sure you keep your head on right on those because you never know. And especially on a, on a scrimmage kick like that, you, you're always like, who's blocking? Same thing with a pick, you know, who's blocking, who, what color, because your mind is swapped. So I'd add that. Next play. Bill, you're gonna you gonna put this in a zone like this. I mean, really, this is more of a deep wing type situation, being two and three. But are you automatically going to a zone, or are you still going to be more towards the center of the field? I'm trying to pull it up on huddle right now because it's getting choppy um, on me. I think one of the and best – And the, it's just a reminder out of the gate. One of the best views for this one is, yeah, the end zone view. Blind side block, BSB. You know, when you look at that play, of course, in huddle, you know, does the guy already, is he already kind of engaged on the block and spins around? Is it a block in the back or is it nothing? I mean, you got to kind of look at that and see, you know, is he already blocking him and then it, it, he spins around? But in, in huddle, you, you better see it. I mean, right, it's choppy here, but I think, and this is the best view when you actually look at it on huddle to see what's actually going on. A punt play. Who's got the cleanup on the back side of this? Who's coming over? Everybody's moving upfield. Referee's coming up from behind. I think it'd be important for the referee to be able to get this cleanup. He might even have action. I, you know, who knows? But um, deep wing. On this particular play, you turn your back. 
we don't we try to limit our turning our backs to the players that are behind you. He does a nice job of just coming and going about a few yards. But I think he's he does but I think you need to do a little more anticipation. He realizes that oh crap. And he turns his head and try and faces the goal line instead of staying in front of the field, in front of uh, his vision. You always want to keep your bill towards the players and start that anticipation sooner. It's better to give yourself cushion. So he turns, turns his head, and then comes back, and he's missed four or five steps. So keep, keep your eyes on the field. I didn't answer the question on the previous play. Um, so if we do have a foul on this particular play for three and one, play was, the foul was called. Foul took place at about the 25. On the receiving team, play ended at the 41. We're calling if we're calling if we have a foul back here on the 25. That's going to be our our spot for the foul. We're going to tack on the enforcement of that penalty from the 25 yard line. You know, from a from a depth standpoint, it's tough to see where these guys where they started. The ball the ball is obviously kicked behind the returner. The returner is retreating to be able to go recover that ball. It puts the deeps in a difficult position to retreat as well. So everybody's trying to get backwards. Ideally, I think it's important to keep your cushion. You're going to have to do what works best for you. A lot of back judges that I work with are typically on a seven man crew are seven and two or they may be a little deeper, they may be a little wider. They're gonna to have to do what works best for you. Deeps, sometimes they call straight line. Straight line meaning they're, they're in line with the back judge. Depending on the depth of the back judge, straight line may work, or if the back judge likes to work at seven and two, the deeps, they might wanna be 10 yards back, so they don't necessarily have to go backwards. They can allow that returner to be able to move and they can keep their eyes still. So you're going to have to get, just get out on the field and work through this a little bit, figure out what's more comfortable for you and your crew, try both options. So that way you can keep your eyes where they need to be. That foul took place at what, about the 20, 22. We're going to have a return up to about the 27. 
where that official put his flag. That's what you want to do as well. You want to make sure your flag is on the spot of the foul. So that's going to be the enforcement spot. Going back to the 22. This particular play here, guys. This isn't this this the, the bubble is actually a tight end, and you can see that the line of scrimmage, the top of the screen, the re outside receiver is on the line. He's on the line of scrimmage. So, how you pump that? How you communicate that with your Office of wing official, how you communicate that with the coaches. That's just something that you're going to have to work on from a communication standpoint. I know for me personally, I'll, I'll actually, I'll actually make a comment saying he's covered to myself. I may tell my opposite of wing official the same thing of, Hey, I've got a covered man just so that we're on the same page when that coach comes up or the receiver, you know, this is college. So the receiver knows what they're doing. So this is a brain fart on their part. But you can see here, when we start to roll this play, The second receiver makes no attempt to go for to run a route. He strictly runs downfield to make a block. So maybe he thought that this ball was going to be caught behind the line of scrimmage. Don't know the answer to that. Reroute of, of a receiving play. Don't know. But for any instance, we got we got a legal man downfield. So we're going to go back to the previous spot which is your enforcement spot and, and mark the penalty. Good job by the, the line of scrimmage official knowing that, you know, that's his key. And he stayed with it and realized that it doesn't belong. It's an umpire play here. Happens behind the line of scrimmage. So if a, if a foul on team A happens behind the line of scrimmage, your basic spot is going to be the previous spot. So for this particular takedown behind the line of scrimmage, previous spot, 10 yards. In the foul report, you're gonna have a subcategory. You're gonna put the foul as, a, as an offensive hold, but then the subcategory would be a takedown. You may see it as a TD. OH. TD. You can see the preliminary signal by the umpire. Gets everybody's mind right. He's able to talk to the coaches. Coach, we got an offensive hold. What's your next play going to be? Gets them in the right spot. You know, if it was a if it was a loss. 
instead of a gain on this particular play, then um, you know the defense may have the opportunity to decline it. So it's a good job by giving a preliminary signal of what the foul is, so everybody can get on the right track, including the officials. It's going to be a pulling guard. Do the next view. Pause. Back it up to 10.25. There you go, that's close enough. So I know we're talking enforcement, but you have to be able to see this as well, guys, because backside is gonna be umpire in seven man. So you're trailing, look at the hat, when uh, when Eric stops it. Right there, you can, wh what is he looking at? Ball carry, he's looking right down the line at the 43 when you should be, you're, you're cleaning up. And now you not only have to clean up, but you have something downfield, you gotta know that spot. So this is where you have to be precise and probably throw it in an area away from players, probably down the hash, so you can kind of triangulate your spots as well. You're going good, let go. Trailing, looking at the play, seeing big, big boy come right down the field. This is play eight in the game. Ball's out of bounds. So your judgment on how you want to officiate this play, maybe you talk to 65, but 65 is going to do this all game. So it depends on what you want to do and how you want to force this dead ball action or potentially enforcement is he down is the is the momentum stopped when this happens i don't know you know this is this is a point in time where you get to make a decision on how you want to proceed with how you're going to officiate the game and this is the, this is how you're going to as a crew officiate the rest of this game and this particular play See here, this is the guy right here. This is an action. So he's he's got a little double. He's got a little offensive hold right there. And then he's coming back down the field and he's trying to take advantage of something else, trips over his own guy. But you can see 75 never really was. And, and then also, Eric, you can see that, um, you know, the deep wing, he's already coming in to clean up. So you're right. So nobody's back there seeing that because, right, his eyes aren't there. He's, I'm out of bounds. So I got to get that. So you're right, who's cleaning that? Somebody got to catch something and nobody's catching it. You can see, you can see the line of scrimmage guy. He's purely focused on, on this spot. So, you know, back judge is over in this direction. Referee's over here, umpire's over here. So yeah, I mean, this is just a crew decision. This is a pregame. How are we going to officiate the game? Are we going to put up with any um, extracurricular? Are we going to have a conversation in the beginning of the game? You know, these are things that you're just going to have to talk about as a crew. 
how you want to handle this game. You know that this may be a rivalry. This may be just two teams that don't like each other. So just how you're going to handle it going forward. Any other comments? This is a five man crew. The L does a great job getting back. Line of scrimmage guy at the top of the screen. He's got a lot going on. He gets the hold. I think the back judge may be a little too deep for this particular play. Be tough to rule from way back there. Um, if there was a KCI, kick catch interference, really tough to rule there. And I know it's a five man crew and you're shaded over to the head linesman side. Puts you in an odd spot from a safety perspective. You know, you don't necessarily want to be 10 yards in between this action. You don't really want to be there. So talking about where you want to be prior to. Uh, uh, shoot. Five, four. From a mechanic standpoint, when it starts to pin you, you might want to start to look at going the other getting into the middle of the field. Why can't I get that? Try it over here. Excuse me, Eric. Yeah. Is there a way to widen this, the screen there? Appreciate it, thanks. See where the, you know, this is blurry, it's blurry on my screen. So he's way over here, seven, five, 10, 10 yards. Really tough for the KCI. You know, if he's already shaded over here on the hash, I think maybe a seven and two approach it might be serve you better as a five man on the back judge perspective because at seven and two you can give yourself the flexibility to roam either direction depending on which way that ball is kicked and if you have a if you need to get to the sideline being seven and two from your returner will be able to get you to that sideline or allow you to have a little more vision So you can swing up to be able to see how that ball's caught or muffed or interfered with. I like how the line judge got his depth to get back here, but He's got to leave his spot. I mean, this is part of dead ball mechanics at this point in time. This is a beanbag on the ground, and you got to get in there. You got to get that light colored jersey out of that sideline. He stands here one, two, three, 
four, probably five dead ball signals. If I were you, one, two, maybe max, and you're in the middle of that mix, bringing that player out. Don't, don't just stand on the sideline. You're not, you're not able to help anybody. This is dead ball officiating at its finest to prevent a foul. Going back to the um, enforcement spot. Happens at the line of scrimmage. It's on the defense. Offense has the opportunity to make a decision on what they want to do at the line of scrimmage. So, no idea what this return number 19 is trying to do here. He, the, the dude, the dude in uh, the dark colored jersey, it wasn't much of an effort to be able to cause any kind of block. I mean, he's also on the on the kicking team. Strange that he goes to the ground, but I don't think there was a lot of forcible contact there. He wasn't trying to block anybody else. Might want to look to see if he was going to try to whip, leg whip, at least from a officiating standpoint. He, he whips himself around, maybe trying to take somebody out. There's a lot going on there. That might be an umpire's call. From, a, from from the other side, you know, right there. It's a pretty good shot in the back there at about the 45. You might have a block in the back on that. Maybe trying to get his head around. I would show the other angle, but I don't think I can see it. I don't think we can see it. Umpire's got to get downfield. Got to start moving upfield. Especially in a five man. Yeah, we don't see the we don't see the contact. I didn't think so. Here we go, BSB, right, guys? This guy didn't see him coming. Wasn't ten and two. Line judge, you got to get in there. Got to get that guy out. What time is it? 6.15. All right. So Bill, do you have any other plays you want to show? Is there anything that you want to bring up here while I while we go through this? Davids are 
Thaddeus, do you guys have any other plays you want to discuss while we're on this topic? Um, no, I don't have any plays like that. Um, my stuff is for next week deep wing stuff. So, good plug. Next week's going to be a lot of deep wing, so we'll do a lot of discussion on the deep wing. You know, everything's still pretty fluid. I know everybody's tired of hearing fluid. You know, due to the times, but we just got to stay flexible. So you can see that I've done the entire presentation in my face shield with my hat on. So you guys are going to have to practice just like everybody else. Hey, Eric, there was a question about access to these huddle plays. Uh, somebody said this is the first time joining in, and they're wondering if they're going to have access to all these huddle plays. Do you know if the individual is considered a young gun, or are they a Division Two or Division One? Young gun. Well, then he already has access. Okay. What, when we when we start to share these plays, I'm sharing with everyone in the chapter. If you're not receiving our huddle, you might want to talk with Maxwell, or you actually talk with your division rep first. Go to your division rep. Say, hey, I don't know if I'm getting huddle plays. And make sure my huddle. I'm in huddle to make sure I receive these plays. And then at that point in time, Eric, you're muted. Just going to talk a little mechanics here on the kicks just for a little bit. We've got a few extra minutes. We can get some extra time in. So 8, 6, 18. I'm going to try to have you off by 625 so you can unregister from this Zoom and register into the general meeting. Make sure you update with your name and division rank so we can account for who's there and who's on the call. This particular play, you know, David, DG or, or Thaddeus, Robert, if you're on the call, I know, I, I believe I know your preferences, but if you have any comments on positioning of this particular kickoff, feel free, feel free to chime in. I'm sure everybody's tired of hearing me talk. Back of the white for umpire. Heels on the edge of the white, get more space. Yeah, and same for the deep wing. Make sure you give yourself as much room as possible from the green. Have we seen any UIL communication about extending the sideline yet? Has that come out yet? Anybody seen it? If there's no exception, they have to it's allowed. It's dead in stone right now that they've, they've come out with. I haven't seen anything either. If, guys, if you haven't seen yet, NCAA is extending the sideline down to the 15-yard line to give these players the opportunity to spread themselves out along with the staff and the training team. And so we're going to go 15 to 15 if you haven't seen that already or if UIL comes out with something different. But yes, you're right. Back of the white gives, pushes everybody back so you've got clear running lanes.
also gives you as a deep wing a better opportunity and angle to see what just happened. So run that back, same, same angle. Right to the kick, or maybe a, a heartbeat or two after it kicks it. So make sure he kicks it, and this is probably for back judge too. Get a feel for it. You're not looking at the kick, but make sure it's not a whiff like this one looks like or an onside attempt or something else because you don't want to be running in looking, trying to chase your keys when you have other responsibilities. So just to slow down. Make sure you, you know what's what the play is before you start hustling in. It's good hustle, but, again, you're out of position when, when it's this type of play. And to chime in, if you look at the deep wing on this play, if you want to rewind it a little bit, Eric, um, to about when the ball is about to cross. So let's remember mechanics for deep wings. You don't want to move with the play until the players cross your face. If you look at this play, the ball crosses, and you can kind of see the deep wing taking a step or two downfield before anybody crosses his face. Um, Remember, remember that 50 yard line is important um, and the play finishes right about there. Um, so if he didn't move, maybe he would have had a little better position um, to see that play better because you see him turn his head and start getting downfield. So just food for thought. Yeah, and this is also a great reason why if you're on that receiving team restraining line, always have a bean bag in your hand. Because especially at the high school level, kicking game is when anything can happen. And like Phil said, if that dude accidentally whiffed that ball and you're not ready for it, and all kind of hell breaks loose at that 50-yard line, you need to have a beanbag in your hand ready to drop it to know who touched the ball and where and when. Hey, guys. Let's go dead ball for a second. Let's look at this particular screenshot of where we are. Who is paying attention to the players on the field? No one. Was that Paul Alamon? Yes, that was. Huh? On the field? No, just talking just now. Well, it kind of looks like him. Yeah, the right. Hey, uh, uh, that was that was him walking away, not paying attention. <laughs> Have him throw a ball. We could tell real quick. Oh yeah, let's see him throw an underhand toss. Let's see if he owes any uh, uh, chasing. Um, hey guys, we got the line of scrimmage. Got a minute and a half. Line of scrimmage guy back turn. We got number two sitting in the middle of the field. Back judge looking, I guess, at his feet, making sure his feet hit the ground. Umpire is trying to get a ball in from the other line of scrimmage guys. Oh, excuse me, that's a deep wing right there. <clears throat> the umpire's right the there. Scrimmage guys are trying to come up. Referee, maybe the referee is looking in here. But we got a lot of dead ball action right here. We got teams changing, and we've got nothing from the front four. Forget about the football. Let teams decide which way they want to go. And then we get the football in. Yes, you want to get a football in as a, as a wing official on the home team sideline. Good job. But wait. Wait for players to clear. Any other comments, guys, before we, we stop this deal? No? Okay, well, as I stated before, I do have my face shield on. My hat does work over my face shield. So all those comments about I can't wear a hat, doesn't work. I did it for the entire hour. Yes, there's no wind in my face and yes, I'm not moving, but I can make it work. Hey guys, we'll see you in a little bit, thanks.